Hi, welcome to Tea Leaves Programming. Today we're programming like it's 1979. So in my NAND to Tetris series, one of the most popular sets of videos on this channel, you create a computer from scratch and you do this using a language called HDL. Now this is based on the NAND to Tetris course and the thing is that HDL is not I mean, I shouldn't say it's not a real HDL, but it's not an HDL that you would probably use in industry. In industry, there are two HDL, hardware description languages, that are commonly used. One's called VHDL, the other is called Verilog. There may be other minor ones. The HDL you're using in Nant Tetris is kind of made up for the class. So a question people have asked me is, is there anything similar that uses VHDL or Verilog? And the answer is yes, uh, but they're not quite as um, constructed into a course as NAND to Tetris is. But I wanted to show you today one of these resources that I think is pretty nifty. It's called HDL Bits. The URL is hdlbits.01xz.net. And what it does is it provides a chance for you to learn a little Verilog and to practice it kind of in anger on synthetic projects. Uh, I'm gonna go through a couple of the exercises here. We're not gonna do a lot of them because the point really is for you to do them, not for me to do them, but I wanted to show you what that looks like. Let's take a look. All right, if you are going to do this, I do suggest you create an account so it can keep track of which problem sets you've already finished. Uh, let's just go to the first problem. I've already gone through a lot of these, so you can see I've got the check mark saying I've done it. You get some description of what a hardware description language is, what Verilog is, and the nifty thing about this is it's actually using Quartus and ModelSim to compile your Verilog basically through a web interface. So we can see here we're being given a challenge. Start with a small bit of HDL, build a circuit with no inputs and one output should always drive logic one or logic high. This is the module declaration. There's a hint if you need it. And this is the code right here. We can see the module has been declared. We need to fix this line. We want this to always be driving, driving one. Well, you might guess this is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna put the number one there and let's see what happens. In fact, let's make sure that it's a bit. I think that's the syntax, which raises an interesting question. Is this going to teach you Verilog? And the answer is you will need some resources outside of these web pages to actually learn the language. Uh, there's plenty of resources online. There's plenty of good books. Um, but this is a good way to actually, instead of just reading a book, try things and see how they work. So let's go ahead and submit it. We can see Quartus starts running. And it's telling us we succeeded, but let's look at those messages. So Quartus is going to take our VH, our VH, our, our HDL, our Verilog, and actually synthesize a design from it. We get lots of info here about what's going on. We get some warnings. In particular, it's warning us that we have a pin that is never changing. That's okay. That was the, the goal here. And if we had an error, we would see it here. And then model sim is what actually simulates that circuit over time, runs the test bench. You can see there's a test, TB is probably for test bench. No mismatches. And then we get to see a graph of everything. That's it, that's all I wanted to show you today. I know this is really short, but uh, I've been, I, I, had, I had encountered this several years ago when I was doing NAND to Tetris and I meant to make a video about it and it just slipped my mind. And then this week I was looking for some Verilog resources and I, I, I found a bookmark to it that I had made several years ago and said, oh my God, I never talked about that. So HDL bits, if you are at all interested in digital circuit design, I think this is fun. 
if you enjoy that type of thing like I do. And I think it's practical if you want some resource to kind of help you brush up on your Verilog skills. I know this particular um, assignment here does not look very, you know what, let's look at one more. Let's skip ahead, right? This is taking two 16-bit full adders and kind of concatenating them into dealing with a 32-bit adder. Um, if you have failures, it saves the failures so you can load them and see what you did wrong. And if you have successes, it'll save your last failure and your last success, basically. Um, so here you could see we're defining wires, we're instantiating our adders, we're hooking up the wires to uh, each other and to the ports. So if you did the NAND Tetris course, this all looks familiar but different, right? Um, what's different about Verilog and of course VHDL to what you did in NAND to Tetris? Well, in NAND to Tetris, all of the HDL is structural. You're putting down AND gates, OR gates, NOT gates, very similar to what we've seen in some of these digital circuit design games like Turing Complete. Very lot, but that's not the only way to design something. And in fact, that way of designing things does not scale well. As the complexity increases, putting individual gates down or even components uh, kind of gets very confusing. And so Verilog and VHDL support other ways of synthesizing circuits. So instead of structural synthesis, there's also something called behavioral synthesis. Let's take a look at another problem here where we're meant to put together three adders and a mux. Um, what this problem is about is that if you put adders together in a ripple, there's a propagation delay. And so this is about essentially doing, uh, I forgot to call it carry select, where you're calculating both if there's a carry and if there's not a carry, and then selecting based on the results of the first adder ends up being faster if you're hooking together a number of these adders. So part of my solution to this is structural. We're putting down some add modules and a mux. But if we look at how I made the mux, I did not put down AND gates, OR gates, XOR gates, NOT gates. Instead, we just define the behavior of the mux. We say, mathematically, this is how I want this multiplexer to behave. And we trust the compiler to generate a good layout for that. So this is a much more powerful and much more scalable way of doing larger designs. And this is the type of thing you will see when you're actually building circuits, as opposed to the kind of um, very artificial HDL, very structural focused HDL that you did in Nanta Tetris. All right, this was what I wanted to show you. HDL bits, it's a bunch of problem sets for Verilog. Uh, if you're like me, I think you'll like it. This is Tea Leaves Programming, and we are programming like it's 1979. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. <laughs>